Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sonali, if you guys didn't already know me. And today I'm gonna be giving you an iPhone 7 Plus review. I couldn't wait to unbox it, so you know, it's already been in use for like almost a week now. So I've gotten a good feel for like the new update and just some cool things about the iPhone 7 Plus. I wanted to share it with you guys, so if you guys wanna hear more about it, then keep on watching. So this is the packaging of the iPhone, and what I found really weird was that it just said iPhone and not like iPhone 7 Plus or anything like that, it just said iPhone. And then it has the picture of the phone, of course. I got rose gold. I had the 6S Plus and the rose gold too, so I didn't really want to stray away from that color just because I really liked it. And a good way of telling the 6S Plus and the 7 Plus apart is this dual camera back here. Unfortunately, the iPhone 7 doesn't have it. I don't know why, but that's exactly why I got the 7 Plus because I really wanted that dual camera. It looked so amazing and I'm so into like photography, so of course I had to get that. But yeah, that's the box and of course they have like the little gentle slide <laughs> so first you see this little thing it's just like kind of like covering everything and then apple is savage sometimes guys like look at this by looking at this packaging you would think that you got the airpods included with the iphone psych there's like a cord in there what the heck how can they do that to me they're so just like cruel so you get the savage normal headphones i mean I don't think they look that much different. And then of course you get a charger and the um, cube that it goes into, the cube. <laughs> so the newest thing that comes with iPhones now is the adapter, the aux cord adapter. Honestly, the most important thing in that package other than the iPhone itself. But I know everyone and their mother hates that the iPhone doesn't have a headphone jack. But honestly guys, I'm pretty sure if you have a headphone jack, like that's the thing that makes it not waterproof. So to make it water resistant, you kind of had to take away the headphone jack. And honestly, I'm not complaining because I'd rather have this little thing than get a little splash of water in my headphone jack and then my whole phone is just messed up. And then I have to pay a lot. So I personally don't mind it. Products are always changing and we always have to adapt to them. It's not gonna be that big of a deal. Like you can even just put this right on your headphones if you wanted to, and that's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get another one and put one in my car and just like stick one on the end of my headphones. But I do think it's weird that you can't charge your phone and listen to music, although I don't do that very often because I actually don't listen to music unless I'm like going to the gym or something. But I see the problem there, but again, which one would you rather have, like a water resistant phone or a headphone jack? I'd say water resistant phone, but that's just me personally. So this is the iPhone 7 Plus and obviously it's not that much different from the 6S Plus. And I actually noticed the girl in Sprint put a 6S Plus screen protector over my phone. But if you're wondering, can I use a 6S Plus case for the 7 Plus? The answer is no, unfortunately. The camera will be blocked a little bit. This is a 7 Plus case, so it's not blocked right now. But I did measure it with my other case and the flash would be blocked. So, I mean, if you don't care about a flash, I don't know. I didn't really put it on, so I'm not sure if like everything is gonna fit. But pretty much, if you're gonna try, just buy a 7 Plus case because it's, it's gonna like block your flash and make your photos like really weird. Like I said, the biggest physical difference is the dual camera, at least for the 7 Plus because on the 7, it doesn't have a dual camera, which I don't really know why. And personally, I don't know why people like don't buy this one. Like it's so much better. So I'm just gonna talk about the dual camera while I'm on the topic. The dual camera helps wide angle photos and zoomed photos like turn out better and also I watched the keynote and this is actually the only reason I wanted the 7 plus okay so apparently it's gonna be an update later this year which I don't know why it didn't come with the phone like that's so weird it's an update when you see a really nice picture taken on a DSLR you can see that the background's blurry you can see that the lights are a little bit blurred and just like that really nice bokeh look and that is what this is going to do when that update comes out, which makes me so mad. <laughs> I really wanted to like just play with it already. So it's going to detect the subject and then detect the background as well and then blur the background, which is going to be so cool because that is like one of the reasons I use my camera for the blurred background. I'm just so obsessed with it. So I'm so excited for that update and 
if like the beta comes out or I think that's what it's called. You can like download it for free and like test it out and be the testers. I really want to do that for that update because I want it now. <laughs> so for the specs of the camera compared to the 6 Plus, the back camera has 12 megapixels compared to the 6 Plus, which was 8 megapixels. So that's a pretty big jump. And the front camera is 7 megapixels compared to the 6 Plus, which was 1.2 megapixels. That sounds really low. I don't know. I did have the 6S Plus, but I didn't have the 6 Plus. I'm not sure if they're like super different. As you can tell, I'm just really pumped about this camera and the update just needs to get here already. Another big difference is the home button. It literally doesn't push in. It's basically like when you put your finger on it and you tap, it's a vibrate and not like a push in. Because when your phone is actually turned off and you try to touch it, it's like it won't push in, it won't vibrate or anything. So that's really weird and something to definitely get used to. I'd rather push it in because it feels stuck to me. That doesn't feel like a good feeling. So now I'm just going to go through some really cool features I found on the new update. The first one being that you can create bulleted lists in notes, which is really cool because I've always wanted to do that. Like I always make my own bullets and it's just like really time consuming. The thing that I found out is that it only works in the iCloud section of your notes. And then if you press done, and click the check mark, then it just starts a bulleted note. So for instance, I am flying back to Georgia today, need to make a packing list, and we're gonna just write some things that I have to bring with me that I have not packed already. And then you can actually check them off which is like so cool, I don't know. I'm just really amazed by that because I've always needed it. Next thing that I found is that you can unsubscribe from email lists just in one button. Like literally it says unsubscribe at the top of every like email list. So for this one, it's just 17. All I have to do is hit unsubscribe and it just unsubscribes me and I never get emails from them again. It is so useful. Usually I have to scroll all the way to the bottom of an email and then click unsubscribe, go to their website, click another unsubscribe. It's just so many buttons, you know, but this makes it so much easier. So the update with the messages is probably one of the biggest updates that I have experienced. It's really messing with my head for some reason, but it's also really cool at the same time. So if you wanna text something, you wanna say hi and hold down the blue arrow and then you can send it with invisible ink. You can send it gently. You can send it loud. You can send it with a slam. You can also click screen, and this is what I really like. You can send it with balloons. So if you were saying happy birthday, then you can send balloons with it. Or you can send it with confetti and lasers. This is probably my favorite because it's just so cool. Next, you can finally delete those apps that you never ever have touched in your whole entire life and will never ever touch. So for me, that would be like, news and if I wanted to read the news I'd probably go to like a specific news app so I don't really want to use that sometimes it's just like taking up space on your phone now you don't have to have that problem overall I don't think it's incredibly different from the 6s plus that I had but I think once the camera update comes out then it'll be a lot different just because of that camera so if you're still thinking about getting this phone and you're upgrading from a 6s or a 6s plus I would just wait till the next phone just because it isn't that much different. But if you are upgrading from anything else, then I do recommend it. If you guys have any more questions about it, then comment down below and I'll be sure to answer. Also, if you guys want a what's on my iPhone video, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!